Hey, good day. I'm Vice Admiral Bob Sharp, and I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and what we do in the maritime domain. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the American Geographical Society for putting this together, bringing us together. Um, I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time and energy to be with us here today. I'm pretty passionate about what we do at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and specifically about what we do in the maritime domain. Uh, when I was interviewing for this job, they asked me what I've done throughout my career that qualified me to work with this agency. I've been working with the women and the men of NGA every step of my career. I've used products and services from this agency every single day. I've deployed with the women and the men of this agency around the world. Um, so it was a great honor for me to be able to come join this team. Uh, this is an important topic, the maritime. And in the Navy, we like to say, remind people that 70% uh, of the earth is covered by water. 80% of the world's population lives in relative close proximity to water. 90% of the goods that we exchange are transferred via water and shipping. And over 95% of the ones and zeros that we exchange to share information around the globe are actually transported by cables that go through the maritime domain. It is the lifeline that fuels the global economy. And at NGA, uh, we do some great work in ensuring that we help support those who operate in the maritime domain. But many people aren't aware of the fact that about 50% of our workforce works from our headquarters in Virginia. About 25% of our workforce works from our headquarters out in St. Louis. And the other 25% is everywhere. And we have NGA support teams embedded with our customer base. Uh, to include a great Navy uh, support team that is embedded with our naval forces uh, at the fleet level around the globe. Hey, if you're really interested in understanding us, um, who we are, what we do, where we're headed, I invite you to read some of the documents that we've made available on our website. Um, specifically, when I first came in to uh, take directorship of, of this uh, agency, I issued Strategy 2025. And you can find that online and download that. And it details how we are aligned to the national security strategy, the national defense strategy, the national intelligence strategy. And it uh, emphasizes four strategic objectives, four areas where we're investing in heavily. And those are people, partnerships, taking care of mission today while evolving to address mission tomorrow. Um, you can also find, if you're in technology field, a great document called Tech Focus Areas. And if you really want details, you can get into our technology strategy. Um, the Tech Focus Areas details areas where uh, we're challenged, areas in technology that we're pursuing, problems we're trying to solve. And it also uh, includes information on how to get involved in working with us, points of contact, uh, areas where you can reach out to us and help us solve problems occurring in the maritime domain or elsewhere. Um, one other document I want to make sure you're aware of was uh, NGA Director's Intent. And I issued this a couple months ago. It provides the, uh, a call to action to our forces um, and describes what we call our moonshot and mission imperatives areas where we need to ensure that we remain the world's very best at geospatial intelligence so that we can compete successfully in the strategic environment. At NGA, we say we exist to show the way, to get you from point A to point B, physically, safely, on time, um, or in the decision process. And we do so uniquely by combining this deep knowledge of the earth from seabed to space its physical characteristics, with experts in bathymetry and topography and aerography and geodesy, and la then layering on top of that foundational understanding of the world, observations as to what's happening where. That sort of perspective that we need so that we can start to build the, the products and services our forces use around the clock and around the globe just to operate. You know, charts, uh, maps, 
and, and this sailor refers to those as land charts, right? Um, but those products and services that we use each and every day just to operate. When you're sailing the ocean and you get into the middle of it, uh, quite often it all looks the same. Um, it's not the same, but sometimes it can look the same. And it's the products and services from this agency that makes sure you don't get lost, that you keep your bearings, that you know where you are. This agency has helped ensure that when I set sail along with 4,999 of my best friends on an aircraft carrier, uh, we know where we're going and we have what we need uh, to operate safely and we have what we need to make sure we come home. Um, we're constantly evolving how we do our business. Now, some of the fundamentals of knowing where you are in time and space and navigating are time honored and uh, true. They remain the same. But the technology is evolving so that it's much easier uh, for you to understand where you are, the context of the world surrounding you. And that just makes us safer as we sail the seas and it makes us smarter about what we're doing where. As, as a lifelong sailor, I truly appreciate the difficulties of operating on the oceans, especially an open ocean. And I can only imagine uh, how people centuries ago did this, setting sail over the horizon, not knowing where you're going. Um, I'm really proud to say that I belong to the agency that makes that a lot easier, right? That provides the products and services so that you understand the complexity of operating in that sort of environment um, with wind and weather unknown over the horizon. Um, without understanding exactly where you are, trying to navigate off of stars, right, to get your bearings as to where you are. Um, it's a lot different today. It's uh, a lot easier, it's a lot safer, and I'm proud to say that uh, that is so because of the women and the men of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Captain Kitch Kennedy later on is going to talk to you about our Maritime Safety Office and uh, the details of what we provide mariners around the clock and around the globe. We exist to show the way. Um, during this pandemic, we've taken opportunity to upgrade a lot of our information that we share with the general population about products and services we have. And I invite you to come to our website, www.nga.mil, to check it out because we redesigned it and we relaunched it just a couple months ago. One of the things you'll see on there is a great video that talks about who we are and what we provide. And I'm gonna tee that up for you here. Who, what, why, when, where? These questions form the foundation of human exploration they are fundamental to knowing and understanding our world. Their answers are essential to information gathering, storytelling, and problem solving. They have inspired the world's most famous thinkers and pioneers to push past the accepted, the conventional, the ordinary, to reveal truly extraordinary discoveries that have shaped our lives and stirred our imaginations and they are at the heart of America's security. At the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the answers to these questions form the foundation of our mission. Everything on Earth, from its watery depths to its highest peaks, can be measured in space and time, what's known as geospatial intelligence, or geoint. Our workforce brings the intelligence to that equation using our capabilities to illuminate options, inform decisions, and act with precision. NGA is a unique combination of intelligence agency and combat support agency. Our work shows the way in the air, the sea, on the front lines of a disaster, from the halls of the Pentagon to the Oval Office. We work side by side with our military services our nation's leaders and first responders to provide the information they need when they need it most, allowing them to take action before events become a crisis.
Our country's defining moments are times of great determination and exceptional achievement. From the Revolutionary War, to the expeditions of Lewis and Clark, to landing a man on the moon, in each you will find geospatial intelligence. NGA and its predecessors have been a part of some of the nation's biggest technological feats and proudest moments. And we've also answered the call during some of its darkest. Who, what, why, when, where. Throughout human history, we've yearned to discover what lies beyond the horizon. The drive to explore our surroundings and understand the Earth is deeply ingrained in our DNA. At NGA, our mission is to answer those fundamental questions today so we can help show the way to a better tomorrow. Our work is foundational, it is advancing, and it is far from finished. We will continue to explore the Earth and also the partnerships, tools, and technologies needed to meet America's geospatial demands. We must and will rise to meet all challenges, exploring where we've been and where we're going, wherever it takes us. Hello, my name is Kitch Kennedy. I am a graduate of the United States Naval Academy in 1996. Uh, from there, I started out as a surface warfare officer where I operated on various naval ships as a division officer in charge of weapon systems, engineering systems. Uh, from there, I transitioned to what is known as the Naval Meteorology and Oceanography Community where I supported all various types of naval operations from special warfare, aviation, anti-submarine warfare, and allowing them uh, to provide an opportunity to understand, better understand the environment and how it affects their systems and operations. And so they could support missions around the world and uh, uh, support national security. Uh, my first foray into GeoInt was when I was a, in charge of the anti-submarine warfare community down in Stennis Space Center, Mississippi. We were working pretty much in uh, PowerPoint and we realized there was a better way to display our data and analyze our data. And we started using GIS and realized that that was an opportunity to analyze across different layers of whether it was currents and winds and visibility and provide the operators a better way of determining when was the best time to take on missions and which sensors were best to use. Uh, from there, uh, I started to get more involved in GEOINT and my current role as the director of the Maritime Safety Office here at NGA. The Maritime Safety Office has a pretty story history that began back in 1830 with the development of the Instrument of Charts and Depot when the United States very early in uh, the infancy of the country realized that the maritime commerce was incredibly important to our national security. At that time, the Charts and Instruments and Depot was in charge of collecting charts around the world for our mariners to sail on. Uh, eventually, we realized that we needed to increase that capacity, and the, in U.S. law, it was determined that we were going to develop a hydrographic office as well. So in the 1860s, Congress put into law that the U.S. would have the, both the instruments of Charts and Depot and the hydrographic office. From there, it became the, the Naval Oceanographic Office and then the Defense Mapping Agency, which then evolved into the National Imagery and Mapping Agency, which is now NGA. The mission of the Maritime Safety Office is encoded in U.S. law in Title 10, which requires that NGA, under the direction of the Secretary of Defense, maintains the means for safe navigation of Navy and merchant marine vessels. In doing so, we provide nautical charts, publications, sailing directions, and other publications which support the safe navigation of all vessels. NGA's primary customers from the Maritime Safety Office is the Department of Defense, which is mostly when we talk about seagoing vessels, it's the Navy and the Marines and the Military Sea Lift Command, who is the logistics component for the Navy. Surprisingly, we also provide a lot of support to the Army, the Coast Guard, and several other agencies across the U.S. government to include the FBI, CIA, Department of Interior, Department of Commerce, and many other customers supporting U.S. interests. So our commercial maritime responsibility really lies with some of our primary charting authorities in some of the third world or nations that do not have the capacity to do their own charting requirements. 
in that respect, we work with nations to ensure that they have updated charts and publications that supports their commerce and their maritime needs throughout the world. Uh, examples would be uh, Palau, Micronesia, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and a handful of others that we have developed relationships through the International Hydrographic Organization and what is known as the capacity building. So in that respect, it's our job to help them build their capacity to have safe navigation products to support their commerce. So the Maritime Safety Office has a wide range of products. Our primary product is our navigation chart. Our navigation chart can be created as a, a paper product, something that you would put on a table and you would annotate and mark up and mark your track. We also have electronic charts, very similar to what you would see in Google Maps or Waze. We do those charts for both surface and subsurface navigation, so subsurface being submarines. And those respect, the submarine chart is a very high density contour chart, much like you would see if you were looking at a mountain that has a lot of different elevation and different changes, you want to see that the variation of that contours, we do the same thing for submarines. So nautical charts is our primary product, but we have a lot of other products that support that with sailing directions and our warport index. What those do is provide additional amplifying information to the nautical charts, that, such as weather, currents, what features a port may have in terms of what depth ship that port may be able to support, how many cranes it may have if you're supporting a cargo ship, how many burrs birthings or anchorages, and just a various amount of information that as a navigator on a ship is approaching a port and they want to understand where they can go, what services they can have, what features they may see in terms of set navigation aids, such as large buildings or monuments or anything that can help them navigate into that port. We provide products in a graphical and a digital format that they can use to go along with their nautical charts. We also create a chart called the littoral planning chart, which is a combination of topography and hydrography, and that's used for amphibious landings, where Marines or Army or anybody that's doing operations where they're going from the sea to the shore, they want to have that combination of both the hydrography and the topography, so as they approach the shore, they understand what they're going to uh, encounter in terms of maybe obstructions or sandbars or any kind of navigation impact on the hydrographic side inside the water. And then as they approach land, they want to understand how can they egress from that landing point into the land environment. So looking for roads, hills, other again landmarks that may be of significance to their operations, whether it's a combat operation or a humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operation, bringing in support to the local economy. So within the safety of nav realm, there are three components of safety of navigation. The maritime safety office is one, but then there's also the aeronautical safety and then geomatics. Geomatics relates to the Earth's magnetic field, Earth's gravitational field, and what we call GS-84, which is one of the primary uh, coordinate systems and datums that is used in many uh, geographic information systems and satellite systems. That is safety of nav. The Maritime Safety Office, in support of our, our safety of nav mission, has what is known as the Worldwide Navigation Warning System Watch, WWNWS. It's created as a result of the Titanic incident, uh, where the Titanic was not aware of the icebergs in the, in the region. And it was understood that there was a way to prevent that through a communication system and a broadcast system, a warning system, that could present this information to ships. So what was stood up through the International Hydrographic Organization was the Worldwide Navigation Warning System. The Maritime Safety Office at NGA is responsible for two regions, one region off the east coast of the United States and the other off the west coast. In In our responsibility in those regions, we collect navigation warnings from Canada, the U.S., Mexico, some Central and Southern American nations, and we retransmit those warnings to the international maritime community, both civilian and Department of Defense and other defense agencies. An example of a warning could be a closure area due to a military exercise. It could be icebergs. It could be warning areas for where there might be some vessels adrift, such as a ship that is underway but does not have power, and it's providing information to those other mariners in the area to be on the lookout. It can also provide information about piracy. The NGA collects this data and provides it for those two regions on the east and west coast of the United States, but we also collect the worldwide 
navigation warnings from all regions across the world, and we retransmit those to the U.S. Navy, who is operating globally, so that we ensure that they have the most accurate and up-to-date navigation warnings in their area. In the Maritime Safety Office, we understand that our customer is the mariner at sea, and we want to make sure that that mariner has the most accurate and up-to-date information possible. It is our mission to ensure that they do not have another Titanic or another incident. There have been several incidents in the past that have changed the way NGA conducts our Maritime Safety Office. One example was back in 2005, the USS San Francisco submarine ran into a submerged sea mount that was not charted. Uh, that resulted in significant damage, millions of dollars of damage, and the death of one sailor. In 2013, the USS Guardian, a mine countermeasure ship, ran into a, a coral reef in the Western Pacific. This was significant because coral reefs are dying, and this ship, when it ran aground, ripped up the coral reef and actually exposed the coral reef to oil and fuel of the ship. And it ended up in having that ship was grounded on this coral reef and unable to be extracted even at high tide. So the ship essentially was dismantled on the coral reef, which resulted in the loss of one of the U.S. Navy ships. The Maritime Safety Office mission is to ensure that these things do not happen. My favorite thing about the Maritime Safety Office is the people. They are incredibly dedicated, they're smart, they're innovative, and they really have a passion for what we do. They have a connection to our customers. Many come from Merchant Marine Academies, and so they have been at sea and they have used our products. But also those that haven't still have a, a strong connection to understand that what we do every day matters to people and it impacts their lives. That the products we create and the services that we provide are ensuring that they can safely operate and succeed at their mission and return safely home. They make it a great place to work, they make it fun, and like I said, the innovation, the creativity, and the sense of purpose is what makes it such a great place. And now, let's go to a conversation with the Director of NGA, Vice Admiral Bob Sharp. Our Navy has just a rich history in dealing with countering piracy. Um, as, you, as you know, Captain Kennedy, yes, it's, uh, that's why we were formed, right? Back with the, the Naval Act of 1794, um, we were formed to counter the piracy uh, that was occurring off the Barbary Coast. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. It definitely, it's a history that's uh, lived throughout the Naval Academy and all of our, our naval heritage uh, that's very important in, in the foundation of what the Navy does and still does today. So it's, uh, you know, that, that first mission is something that we uh, propagate now, 240 plus years later. Yeah. Sure. Unfortunately, we're still dealing with those challenges. Yes, sir. Right? And, and many, and some, and many in the same places. Maybe not the Barbary Coast, but places like uh, the South China Sea uh, and Indian Ocean are still areas that uh, have been prevalent in piracy, piracy for you know, hundreds of years. And yeah, here at uh, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, we've had a prominent role in helping the Navy and the navies, the world's navies. Uh, deal with the privacy threat. Yes, definitely, sir. Um, and that's the Maritime Safety Watch uh, that we have here at, at NGA uh, receives broadcasts from around the world. Uh, and in those broadcasts, it talks about shipwrecks and icebergs, but it also has piracy events or distress signals that the Maritime Safety Office watch here collects from around the world and transmits both to the Navy and also to the international community and the public at large. So they have access to that. Uh, the, that information and they can use that data to plan voyages in the future or just try to understand what is a threat of piracy. So it's definitely something that uh, is very important at NGA. We're also part of the uh, U.S. Uh, Maritime Advisory Committee mm -hmm. and that is part of the Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, Homeland Security, uh, several other intelligence community agencies where we will put out advisories to warn mariners, uh, mm -hmm. pr primarily U.S. mariners, of what threats are out there and then alerts to say this is happening now so that as they're out at sea they can make sure that they're making the necessary pre precautions to either avoid those areas or if they have to transit there because sometimes you just have to go through those high threat areas you're, you're ready you're ready with the fire hoses and uh, mm -hmm. and you know that emergency action plan now you and I've sailed around the world quite a bit and we've uh, benefited from those sorts of advisories um, but we're normally on ships that are that are Yes, sir. Uh, capable of defending ourselves. I know talking to the maritime community, they really appreciate that extension of the horizon, mm -hmm. right? Yes, so they can see 
um, over the horizon and be prepared to deal with some of those threats. Oh, definitely, sir. Uh, like you said, they, they're not going to have uh, trained security forces and they're not going to have the weapons that we have on board. Uh, but as I mentioned, they still have to get to where they need to go and that can take them through some pretty high threat areas. Uh, I mean, it is a low possibility that they would get a piracy uh, attack, but it's there and they need to be ready. Mm -hmm. um, so, sir, I was going to ask you, do you have any experience with piracy? Uh, I have not been a pirate myself, but that's what you're asking me. <laughs> I always tell people, we don't, we don't do uh, piracy, we do counter-piracy yes, or anti-piracy, right? Um, I, I do have uh, some significant experience with it. I think um, I may have shared with you that from 2008 to 2010, I was stationed in Bahrain. Mm, yes, sir. And uh, I was the director of intelligence and also the deputy director for our Maritime Operations Center. Mm -hmm. If you recall the history of the Somali piracy threat, yes, uh, it really spiked in 2009. Yes. Um, I can remember on a Friday, we had uh, the pirates had just captured a ship, and the task force commander was saying, hey, we think that's all they can handle. I think they had three at that time okay. because of because their anchorages and over it was a long weekend and over that long weekend they they doubled or tripled oh, wow. the numbers of ships that they had in custody and uh, we were involved in creating uh, you know a strategy for dealing with this which had three components to it the first was to work with industry partners to make them less piratable mm -hmm. right to it yes to establish some best practices so that they could help protect themselves and operate more safely. Uh, the second was to not do it alone as the United States Navy, to make sure mm -hmm. this was a coalition effort. Definitely. And I think you're really familiar with the great cooperation that goes on amongst the navies, yes. sharing information and deconflicting um, how we conduct operations out there. And the third was to, to establish legal recourse. Yes. You could hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, that's still underpinning the counter-piracy mission you know, out in the Gulf of Aden today. Yes, sir. Do you see that changing now that uh, Gulf of Aden is an area where piracy has decreased quite a bit, mm -hmm. and maybe that's because of our presence, but now we're seeing more piracy, the Gulf of Guinea or over by the Straits of Malacca and other areas. Do you think that the U.S. and our coalition partners can have the same influence in reducing that threat around the world? I, I do think we can have the same influence and the same sort of approach. Right where and and NGA has a big role to play in that, yes. because uh, a lot of the deconfliction and the cooperation that that's necessary to deal with that threat um, relies on the ability to understand what's happening where. Yes, sir. And either either real time, like the advisories that mm -hmm. we send out from here, or to uh, to look at it and analyze it over time. Yes, sir. Right for patterns. Definitely. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I think that's another area where NGA plays a significant role in, in our, our maritime watch because we've been collecting data for <clears throat> over 30 years of various uh, events around the world. Uh, used to come in via telegraph or mail or a phone call, but now we're getting it crowdsourced. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's coming right to our, our watch. So we're able to take that data and put it in a, a nice format where people can uh, research it and look again, like you said, where are the tendencies? Is it a, is there a seasonal variation? Uh, or does it go with uh, you know, the growing season or the fishing season? Mm -hmm. Or where do, we, where do you see that? And that might be something we can use uh, as part of those coalitions to identify when and where we need to place forces. Yeah, it, everything happens in time and space. Yes, sir. And being able to analyze that data spatially, temporally, helps you to, to start to visualize patterns and understand it so yes, that sir. you can be predictive Yes, in sir. the information and how you're behaving. So, sir, uh, from your understanding and your time in Bahrain, mm -hmm. um, what did you see as the factors that uh, were conducive to a piracy or where pirates would look to, uh, to find their, their, their victims, so they're, to say? Yeah, they're very opportunistic, right? They're looking for um, those areas where uh, they have reach, where they can come unexpectedly uh, up on merchants, unsuspecting merchants. Yes and where you have a large number of traffic flow. Mm -hmm. you know, so we were, when I was in Bahrain, we were dealing with it in the, in the Gulf of Aden and off yes, the sir. coast of Somalia. But uh, prior to that, you know, navies were dealing with this in the Strait of Malacca, mm -hmm. right, with, yes, with choke points. Um, I think you were talking about how we're, we're having this problem now um, off the western coast of Africa. Yes, sir. Kitch, one of the things you were talking about is the way we support the counter piracy mission, the advisories we put out. Yes, sir. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about how the technology's changed, right? How we're yes, how sir. we're leveraging technology to make this, 
you know, the power of GeoInt in the hand of the user. Yes, sir. Uh, it used to be a message that we'd send out, so mm -hmm. it was uh, just a teletext message. Uh, then it evolved into a website where you could go to a website and you could actually query the data uh, by location, by date range, and do some research to identify what was actually happening, sp specific locations. And now we have an app that uh, is available for anybody. So you never think you'd say this in the government, but it's available on the Google Play and Apple App Store uh, where anybody can download it and they have access to all the data that NGA has. Uh, anybody can download it. Anybody can. Right? Yes, sir. We invite you to go download the app, check it out. Definitely, yes sir. Yeah, it's a great resource, and it's updated all the time, and like I said, it's, uh, it's got every piece of information. So when it comes to that piracy, there's nothing that we really hold in terms of incidents and, and, uh, and uh, occurrences that uh, we don't put in that app. You know, one thing we created while, while I was out in Bahrain was the shared awareness and deconfliction meeting. It was a reoccurring meeting, and it's still ongoing with international partners to talk about how you improve sharing of information because that that sort of application where you can operate from a common understanding Definitely. of what's happening where is so important so that you can start to coordinate operations so that if uh, if an incident occurs yes. one everybody's alerted and then you can quickly uh, analyze who's in the best position mm -hmm. to deal with that yes, sir. Uh, to go and, and provide capabilities to those in distress yes, sir. I know we've covered a lot of information here today in a relatively uh, short amount of time. And this is really just, as, as we say, the GeoInt uh, tip of the iceberg, you know, for everything that goes on in this important mission area and everything that's available. Um, but for those watching, um, we want to thank you for spending the time here with us. Uh, we want to once again thank the American Geographical Society for pulling this audience together. And if you want to learn more about what NGA is doing to help counter piracy, we invite you to check out our website, www.nga.mil. Uh, you can see how we do indeed show the way.